Hello everyone, uh, greetings from Ben Gorloch in the northwest of Scotland. We're going to do two things today. One is I'm going to show you how to generate a line graph using Microsoft Excel. And secondly, we're going to take a look at something called linear regression. What linear regression does is it actually looks at how well the um, independent variable and the dependent variable are correlated. It looks at the correlation between the two. So I will screen share. I already have my data in the spreadsheet here, which I will share with you to save you having to type it all in. I normally wouldn't display my results like this. You'll notice we have each of the results in triplicate. We have three values for each one. Um, I wouldn't normally uh, illustrate it or present it like this in that normally I would have these three values, for example, side by side going across. But when trying to actually generate a line graph in Excel, it's easier if it's laid out like this. So I wouldn't present it like this in my laboratory write-up, but I do keep it like this for when I'm making the graph. So what do we do? Well, first of all, we have to select our data. which I will do like that. Uh, we then insert, and we've got option of graph. So what we're going to actually generate, first of all, is something called a scatter graph. So we're just gonna have all our points laid out first. It's the first one just there, without any lines, okay? And quite quickly, we have a graph of sorts. We have our points on our graph. We've got crabs that have been kept in 75% seawater. And we have uh, crabs that have been kept in 50% seawater. The MG is milligrams. That is the, the mass, really, isn't it, of the crabs rather than the weight. That's not quite how I want the graph. So if we go to quick layout, we have a number of different options. I've explored all these beforehand. So to be honest, I know pretty much what I want. You can see we get a lot of different types and I'm saving that one for last because that's what I'm going to go for. Press on that and our graphs been somewhat transformed. For example, we can label our axes. So this of course is time in minutes. Um, I'm going to actually put the time as plus or minus one minute. So if I do insert and go to my symbols, and of course, because I use it quite a lot, it's at the front just there. You may have to look for it a little bit more, but you probably used it the, the other day. Uh, over on this side, rather than weight, I'm going to more correctly put it as mass. That didn't go too well. Let's try again. And in this occasion, I need symbol again, plus or minus, and it is plus or minus 0.1 of a milligram. Okay, MG just there. Title, the effect of percentage salt water of the mass of crabs. Okay, perhaps I'll spread that across, maybe put it onto one line if you let me do that. Try again. No, it's not letting me do it. Keep on trying. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, it doesn't look like it's going to let me do that, is it? I'm reluct very reluctant, though, to give up. I should just be able to drag that across in the corner, shouldn't I? But it's not letting me do so. Okay, give up. That will have to stay like that. There's possibly another way I can do it. I want to fit it on one line. 
that fixed it. That changed the, the, uh, the size of the text, so it works fine there. Now you'll notice we've got our point, but now we also have a trend line. The trend line is as a dotted line, it doesn't have to be, and I'm sure we can change that. It's not something I'm going to spend time on today. We have the equation for each line. It's linear, so it's quite a simple equation. I'm not very interested in the equation really. What I'm interested in is this R squared. This R squared value indicates the correlation. You'll notice most of our points are very close to the line. It's not surprising that the correlation is very, very high. I might improve, increase the uh, text size on that. Nine's a bit small for me. Maybe not so bad if I put my glasses on. Do the same just here. Make it a little bit bigger, up to 12. And we can see it a little bit better there. I could do that, obviously, all the, all the text as well. I'm also going to make it a little bit bigger. Like that. Like that, just to tidy it up. What else can I do to improve this? Uh, well, we can play around with the grid. It might be you want to read off the horizontal scale here from the, the X axis. So if I right click on that axis, I can add major grid lines. And if I right click again, hopefully I can add minor grid lines. And I just think that looks a little bit more like a graph. Uh, I haven't tried this for a long time, but I suspect I can change the trend line. Here we are, just they want to keep it as linear. What I'm looking at, I think I want to get rid of the equation. Don't want the equation really. I'll move myself across just there. What I did want to change, possibly with the style of the line. So we've got a dash type there. I quite like continuous lines. I think I prefer that. I might change its color. I'm just hoping if I change the color, it's going to change it here as well. Mm, okay, change my mind, I'm going to keep the color as it is. Then click on this one. We know that we're on the right one because it shows red just there. I'm going to make that. I pressed the wrong thing there. I'm going to make that continuous as well, rather than dash line. And it has changed it here on the key over here. If I close that, Hope the graph's going to fit on a little bit better on there. I think that's, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, there's only one thing that's not quite right here. If you were to put a results table into your internal assessment, all your data in your table should be the same number of decimal places. Even if it's 4.0, it has to say 4.0, not 4. Four is not correct. Every single piece of data has to be the same number of decimal places. That's easily fixed. I click on one of these two. I think it's that one. Let's have a look. No, it's the one on the left. <laughs> and that's done it, okay? Every single one is to one decimal place. Maybe move that up a little bit. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. So on my small screen just here, we can see the entire graph. So I'd like you to um, work through what I've just done to create a graph like this. After that, I'd like you to create a very simple experiment of your own. I don't need you to write out the design and the planning. If you're a physicist, it could be very simple, like uh, carry, um, hanging different numbers of coins, maybe from a rubber band and measuring the length, something like Hooke's Law. If you've got a thick rubber band and a thin rubber band, obviously you could compare them. I'm not too worried really on having two lines. So you could just do it with one rubber band. But it'd be quite nice if you could generate some data of your own, especially if you think it's going to be linear data. That means when you plot your graph, you get a straight line like this and then process it in the same way as I have done here and have a look at the R squared values to look at the correlation. If R squared equals zero, that means a total scatter. Okay? There's no line, trend line that you could produce through those points. 
if r squared equals one, that's a total correlation. So all your points will fall on the line. Okay, I hope you enjoy this task. All the best. Good luck. In a moment, when it will let me, I'm going to stop recording.